we want to find a possible equation for the trigonometric function graphed here in blue. Looking at the graph, we should recognize this as a transformation of either the secant function or cosecant function. But to help us find a possible equation for this blue function, we'll actually sketch a sine or cosine function that has the same transformation, then find the equation of that sine or cosine function, and use that equation to determine the equation of our transformed blue function. But to do this, we need to recognize the relationship between the basic cosecant function and sine function, as well as the relationship between the secant function and the cosine function. Here's the graph of the basic cosecant function and sine function, and notice how the relative minimums of the cosecant function here and here are the maximums of the red sine function, and the relative maximums of the cosecant function here and here are the minimums of the sine function. And the same relationship holds true for secant and cosine. So going back to our example, these three points will be where we have maximum function values for our transformed sine or cosine function, and we'll have minimums at these two points. Notice how the minimum values are positive one, the maximum values are positive five, and therefore the midline would be halfway between these values at y equals three. Which means the sine or cosine function with the same transformation would look something like this. And now to find the equation of the red transformed sine or cosine function, we need to focus on one period of the graph which will determine whether we use sine or cosine. So for example, if we use this piece of the graph, because on this interval the function starts at the midline, then there's a maximum, then back to the midline, then to a minimum, and then back to the midline, we use a transformation of the sine function to find the equation of this red graph. And again, keep in mind that the transformation of this red graph will be the same transformation as the blue graph. And since we're using the sine function to find the equation of the red graph, we'll be using the cosecant function to find the transformation of the blue graph because sine and cosecant are reciprocals. So we'll find the equation of our sine function in the form y equals a times sine of b times the quantity x minus d plus c, where a affects the amplitude, b affects the period, d affects the phase shift, or horizontal shift, and c affects the vertical shift. So let's begin by determining the value of a. The absolute value of a is the amplitude. So looking at the red graph, the distance from the midline to a maximum, this distance here is two units, and therefore the amplitude is two, which is also the distance from the midline to a minimum, which we see here. But notice how because of the pattern where we have midline, maximum, midline, minimum, midline, there's no reflection across the horizontal axis, and therefore A would be positive, and therefore A is positive too. The period of our graph is equal to two pi divided by B. So looking at the red graph again, notice how from one to seven, we have one complete cycle of our sine function, and therefore the period is equal to six, which means two pi divided by b must equal six. Well, if we want six over one, so now we'll cross multiply and solve for b. Notice that six b equals two pi. So if we divide both sides by six, notice how b would be equal to pi over three. Now we'll find the value of d, which represents the phase shift. Notice how this graph of our sine function has been shifted right one unit, because normally the sine function starts at the midline when x is zero, not one. So because we have a shift right one unit, d is equal to positive one, but notice how in our equation that means we'll have the quantity x minus one. And then finally for c, which affects the vertical shift, because the midline is at y equals three, our graph is shifted up three units. 
and therefore c equals positive three. So the equation of the transformed red sine function would be y equals a, which is positive two, times sine of b, which is pi over three, times the quantity x minus d, so we have x minus one, and then c is positive three, so we have plus three. So again, the transformation of the sine function would be the same transformation of the blue function when we're using the cosecant function. So a possible equation for the original blue function would be y equals two cosecant of pi divided by three times the quantity x minus one plus three. And a nice way to check this would be to graph both functions on the same coordinate plane and make sure it matches the two graphs we have here, which I've shown here on the next slide, verifying that our work is correct. I hope you found this helpful.